Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Lea, this is my channel about cross stitch and today I'm going to show you so many new good things. I have so much to talk to you that I actually have to cut some of the topics today because, and I will talk uh, about them in my next floss tube because they're not very urgent, but there's a lot. So let me give you a quick rundown of what I have planned. So I will tell you about my progress in February. Then I, let me see. Then I will talk about the Stitch Asia hashtag and I have a special project for that. I got a gift that is so epic. A viewer sent me a huge package and I have new plans. I have new plans for my gamer full coverage piece and I will do some calculations with that. And um, I will talk about my plans and I have some cross stitch history and all the good things so what I actually have to cut is talking about my magical stitches plans and how I track things. I will talk to you about this maybe in a special video or in my next floss tube. I don't know yet how that's going to turn out but please let me know in the comments if you're interesting, interested in my tracking methods. So let's start. I have currently 10 active whips and I have some that are in my drawer that I won't touch this year so there's 10 that I'm actively working on and I've worked this month on nine projects. Now I have some that only have like 200 stitches in but anyways and um, let's start. You're going to see all the edited goodness so before and after pictures. Now let's start with gamer. So here you can see everything I got in this column. I'm working in the second column of pages. I will work column-wise. So there are seven columns like this. The first one was a bit narrower, more narrow. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's how far I've come. And I, as you know, I struggled last year I was stuck in the second page and this year, this one I did in January and this one like from here I did this month in February. I'm so proud. I got almost a full page in a month, which is crazy. So you see where it was last time. You can see, so I know that in the privy, the photo you see I on the last day of January I added a few hundred stitches on the monitor on this side so it's not uh, like I did the complete page but um, also there's a little bit missing down here so it's not a full page but let me tell you the statistics of the month and of this project so as I said I worked on nine projects that's a total of 58 hours in comparison in January. I only stitched 41 hours and just so you know this is I'm not stressing myself This is not a race or anything. It's just fun for me to compare the statistics So I'm not super disappointed that I only stitched 41 hours. I think that's absolutely fine but it's just fun for me, you know to see how much I've done and it helps me to plan for future projects to see how much I stitch on average in a month on each project so I can plan when I buy a new project and it has like 90 pages. I know that it will take me like 15 years or something and I'm like, okay, maybe I won't start that one. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just so you know, it's not about stressing myself out and... Um, but yeah, it's just fun for me. So, and hopefully for you too. So I'm going through the project. So this is Gamer. I worked, I put 3,800 stitches in him, in her, <laughs> this month. And uh, I'm so proud of it. So I recalculated. This took me like 20, 28 hours, something like that. And it got, it was, 
It was only manageable because there is very little colors in this part of the image. And here is a little bit more confetti. The greenery is always lots of confetti. And it was, they are okay, but there are still lots of color changes in these Tetris blocks. And there's a purple one coming up down here. So it was a really fun page and I think I enjoyed it way more because I could use it for many magical stitches challenges and as you know I, I struggle, I like confetti, I struggle with too little color change so working towards a challenge to get more stitches in and getting more stitches faster with these blocks really helped me a lot to get through like these colors and um, it's so fun this piece so what made me recalculate is now I have two um, numbers for how much I stitched in January I did 2000 stitches on Gamer this month I did 3800 so what I calculated is how much I need to stitch each month to get seven pages a year which means this will take me another six years. Yeah. So, well, now I want to finish this quicker, but I know I have to stay where I'm comfortable. So I know that I burn out. I think a reason why I burned out last year is because I set to my goals too high for this and then I didn't want to work on it anymore. So I'm pretty comfortable in the range of two to three thousand stitches per month because this this month was pretty extreme and I think I won't achieve this as quickly again. And I really don't want to burn out on the project. So my new plan is I calculated and uh, maybe this helps you too if you want to know how long you will stitch realistically on your full coverage. So what I did was um, I calculated how big a page is. So one page in a Gecko Rouge is 61 by 79 stitches. And I hope I'm right with that because I had to count how much is it, it is. And that makes 4,819 stitches on one page. And this um, pattern has seven by seven pages. Um, but the outer pages are smaller, but I will ignore that and just calculate that everything is a full page. And then I calculated um, with 2000 stitches per month by 12 makes a certain amount of stitches. So if I had stitched 2000 per month, so 2000 by 12 months, and then I divided it by the 4819 stitches I have on a page. And then I know how many pages I can do in a year with that rate. And with 2000 stitches, I can only do five pages this year. Then I tried it with 2800 and I did some backwards calculations so I could know. Um, how much I had to stitch for seven pages and I got to 2800 per month for seven pages and I think that's a pretty reasonable goal to achieve um, so I'm good with that so this is my new goal so what I do right now is I have a notes everyone has a notes app where you just can put a note in on your phone and I just put the headline gamer tracker and I put like January 2800 goal and I stitched amount X. And below that I just every night after I stitch on Gamer I put like the date and the number of stitches that I get from Pattern Keeper. So it's just like a list. It's so simple um, at the end of the month. Or sometimes in between, just I'm, because I'm curious how far along I am, I just add them all up and put like a sum like in between of how far I've come. And so I know maybe I just put this project in for some more evenings. Or if I already achieved my goal, I can work on something 
else. That's how I do it and it makes it so easy and so it's not a lot of work to track my progress. I don't put it in a book or something. Um, with this notes app I always have my phone with me because I use Pattern Keeper or I watch YouTube on it and so it's not a lot of work to track it and that's very important for me because I know when I make it too complicated and put it in a book um, I might have not have the book and skip putting down the notes and then I will lose track and I will just stop tracking altogether. <laughs> So just so you know, that's how I track my progress on this. So yeah, next month, 2,800 stitches. So with 3,800, I already have some advantage, but there will be months where I don't want to work on Gamer again, and that's absolutely fine. So yeah, we'll see about that. But I promise that's the longest I'm going to talk about one project, but I just want wanted to get this out because I hear from many people as feedback, oh, that must be so much work to track all that and it must be so stressful. Um, so I just wanted to explain to you how I do it and what's my thought process behind all that. So this is project number two for the month and it's Murky Manor. And as you can see, I finished the moon. And it's, by the way, Gamer is on 25 count, one over one. And this is on a 28 count, I think. It's a very soft fabric. I don't know what it is. I purchased it like 10 years ago or more. And um, I wanted to finish this last year. I started this, I think, in 2009 or something. So it's my oldest whip and I'm really ready to just get it done, even though it's very, very fun to stitch. But, you know, so this side is completely done. All of the house is completely done, except for the part down here. And the there's two gravestones missing, a little bit of the wall, the ghost and a bed. You can see where I was last time in the picture on the side and... So I counted the stitches that I have left on this because I wanted to know if there are, if I could use it for a thousand stitches challenge. And there are like 750 stitches, including back stitches left. So I'm so excited for that and I want to finish it this month. So there's only a little bit done here. I will work on it this week for sure. And um, I'm so excited to get this finished. I'm really, really excited. Um, so hopefully next time you see it, it will be done. And I stitched uh, all of this part below here, including this fence post this month for several magical stitches challenges. Please let me know if you're interested in what challenges I use it for. I'm always not sure if that's interesting if you're not in the challenge group. So oh, just let me know if you want to know. And um, so I stitched 1416 stitches on it for 11 and a half hours. I got this frame and I didn't measure right, but this is so all the Shops are closed right now, but are we have like a mixed store that has like, you know, everyday stuff that's open and they have these frames, they are 30 by 30. And I got this for Murky Manor, but it doesn't fit 100%. And here I really need your help. Because I mean, I like, I don't like when pictures have a huge um, part like mat on it. So you have like a huge fabric, lots of fabric until the frame starts. So I like to have it framed very narrowly, but I think it might, it, it is a bit too small, but um, so will I wait until I can buy a bigger frame? Or will I live with it being a little bit cut off? 
So it means that I will have, I will just put it down here so you can see where it cuts off. And I mean, it's a bit sad for the stitching, but I don't glue it or anything. I can always reframe, put it in another and bigger frame. But this is like, I don't want, like shipping is so expensive if you buy bigger frames. So I really don't want to order a bigger frame. And I really like the simplicity because when I have like many cross stitches sitting on my wall, I don't want to have like 50 different frames, 50 different fabrics. I just want it to be like calm when the stitches are very different in themselves. So I like it to be a little more simple. So this is probably how I have to cut it off. I don't know, does it look weird? Or, d I mean, I think I will have to use a frame that's like five centimeters bigger. So it's a 35 centimeter by 35. That's like one inch on each side more. But I really, I just wanted to frame it so bad. I think it doesn't look as bad. I don't know. So what do you think? Would you frame it like that? I mean, on the top and the bottom, it fits perfectly. Um, it's just on the side, but I don't think it's that bad. So I'm fine with having the moon cut off because it's so big anyways. And there's not much missing, just a few branches on the tree. And yeah, so what would you do? Would you frame it like that? Or would you wait for a bigger frame? So next one is, um, let me just see what's on top of my big pile of projects. So this is my Mirabilia, Mirabilia Cathedral Woods Goddess. This is actually 500 stitches I did this month already in March. So Mir Mirabilia Cathedral Woods Goddess is my focus project for the month. Um, besides Murky Manor and Gamer, of course, because I really want to finish her soon, as I have a new Mirabilia planned that you haven't seen before on my channel, and I won't tell you, but she will be glorious, and I just, I don't know, I, I want to start her so bad, so I want to get this one finished, and I Actually, I think I started her like over a year ago and it's about time that she gets some love. She doesn't deserve um, to take such a long time. So I want to have her as a focus this year. And so I stitched 200 stitches in February on her. Um, and yeah, I think you see the difference from around here I think I stitched all of the dress down here and I think around here is the bottom of her dress and there will be a leaf and another leaf and that's I think where she stops oh I have a yeah anyways so it's close but I really didn't want to buy the next size of fabric just because I want to have like an inch more of a border. I will have to live with that. So she will be, she will stop probably around here, but it would have been, I would have had to pay twice as much just to have a little bit more border. So that's why it's all a little bit close to the edge, but I think I can make it work. And what you can always do is just sew a bit of cotton fabric on the side to make it easier for framing. So you have more material to work with. Or if you need, if you have problems putting it in a Q-snap, you can always add like some cheap fabric on the side and just sew it along here. And uh, you have a bigger, more fabric to grab onto. So that's from a Mirabilia and the plan is to get 
her maybe her dress down here finished so another thousand stitches maybe we'll see about that but yeah that's her and in case you don't know this is how she looks like i think i can add this to the video maybe i already did um next one next one so this is why I really need to get these uh, videos done in the beginning of the month so I can be accurate with what I did. Now this is my Chatelaine and so many of you guys asked about my Chatelaine. This is how far I've come. I will try to put this in this corner and show you where I was last time. So I stitched only... Um, I added some dark blue in these edges with silk and around here so I finished the dark blue in this part of the pattern and um, I added the silver petite treasure braid around here so I converted I don't know if it asked for petite treasure braid or crinic I don't know anyways this is petite treasure braid and it's crazy you have four rounds of full stitches of petite treasure braid in several different colors of gold and this is going to be around the edge up here so all around this I will have to have a band of four <laughs> petite treasure braid crosses it's crazy but i love working with petite treasure braid even though my stitches don't look as nice as they could probably let me see if i can show this to you a bit closer so these are my gold stitches and it's just one over two so i use one strand of petite treasure braid and this is still my favorite metallic to work with it's so shiny it's so glittery you don't in i mean if you have dim light it glitters so so much and um, i can't wait to show this to you once i finish this band of gold and um, how much it will sparkle and I still haven't decided on what I want to put in these. The pattern calls for lavender flowers, but I want something more like more popping. So I don't know, I'm still debating if I put like a dark pinkish red, like there will be beads around here, or if I put gold in them, or I don't know. I just want it to be to look more a little bit more modern I don't know so this is how the picture will look like in the end this is um, medieval town mandala and as you can see I finished the middle I just have to fill in the flowers in these squares and here you see the band of gold and it's crazy that's why you don't see the beauty of it in these pictures because it's so so detailed it's crazy and up here this is something that i really loved about this picture what it what made me want to start it is these beautiful shades of blue i love this and they have these dark red pinkish beads in here so i'm thinking to you know emphasize these flowers a bit and the flowers around it to use like a shade of pink that matches these flowers around here i don't know i'm i will probably take some time and leave these just empty until i can decide If you have a really good idea that I could try, let me know in the comment section. When I finish this, I will try to put my full color conversion online. If you want to pick up some changes that I made for your project as well. Um, oh, I didn't tell you, I stitched on... The Chatelaine is 200 stitches in the metallic and the dark blue 
and um, that was two and a quarter hours so it took me more than two hours next one up here is heaven and earth designs it's a full coverage this is gypsy firefly i put 810 stitches in here compared to last time and it only took me three and a half hours so there were not many confetti stitches in here i think it's from here this whole part is what i did i did this on two days and it's only three and a half hours it's crazy it's so fast now i still like to stitch full crosses more i just I don't know, I'm more motivated to do full crosses. I just like to do full crosses. But um, I will still, and I will start another one with 10 stitch because this is crazy. If I find a pattern that I want to do that is pretty big and has not, so the pattern looks like there's not much confetti, I will try to do two strands over one on 28 count. So th this is a 28 count Zweigart even weave in gray. I will just use gray because if there's like, if, if the fabric peeks through, it's not like super bright um, white shining through. So the gray doesn't pop as much and you don't see that there's any fabric showing. That's why I chose the light gray. And it's really still very comfortable um, to stitch on. You see the light, uh, you see the holes very easily. It's light enough. Um, so I would really recommend using gray as a base. But if you want it gridded, there's just white fabric that is pre-gridded. So what I'm doing is, this is by the way, um, CXC floss. It works perfectly on this. It gives perfect coverage on 28 count you really don't see any difference um i like how my stitches look i'm very happy with this and yeah so i'm just working my way um so i started in the corner and my stitches go that way so i go uh, come out in an empty hole and put my needle down into a hole that is already stitched. That way it's easier to make your stitches look neat because when you pull pull your needle below, up through a hole that has already a stitch in it, it is likely that you pull a little bit of the floss that you stitched the old stitch with and the old stitch could look like a bit ugly. <laughs> So it doesn't have to be like that always, but there's a chance. So if you want to play safe, try to go up through a hole that's unstitched and go down through a hole that is stitched or through an empty hole. Doesn't matter in that case. Um, so that's why I'm working my way from the corner and out here. So I work like a little bit in columns, but also a little bit to the side. I'm not strictly working in 10 by 10 blocks. So yeah, I hope that was understandable of how I approach this piece. I really love it. It's not a priority, but um, I really try to get some good stitching on it this year as we're trying to do with all of our whips, right? Okay, next one is... What do I pick next? Next one is this. So this is the castle by Teresa Wensler. This is how the original looks. I have the fantasy collection book. And this is how my colors look. So I leave the roof pretty much the same. I left this part pretty much the same, but I changed the all the yellow I changed to purple. I changed the pink around the corners on the outside to a um, like more reddish purple and I changed the color walls to a gray. So I made the color scheme like more so here's my progress. So as you can see, I stitched the part of the tower 
these are more stitches than it looks like i'm always scared that uh, people will think uh, in magical stitches that i didn't do a lot but there is so many all of this in here are like quarter stitches and they count as half a stitch so it's let me see it's only 200 stitches in here with back stitch counting two back stitches equal one cross stitch and uh, I cross stitched or I back stitched the windows and there's just so many quarter stitches but you can curse as much as you want on the pattern the result looks amazing I'm fascinated how well um, Teresa Wenzler can design it's really amazing with these super tiny details down here how beautiful and dimensional this looks that is like with most of my cross stitch i don't have like really big plans so i just pick out several pieces that i really want to get finished because i have something similar that i want to stitch um, queued up and so i want to get the old one finished and start the new one once I finished the previous project. Um, this one, this is Lunar Witch by Autumn Lane Stitchery. This is the comparison to what it looked like last time. So I stitched on 200 stitches on Lunar Witch. I didn't stitch on all of these smaller like 200 stitch projects. I didn't stitch on them until the end of the month. There was a challenge to do 200 on several different projects and I just wanted to take a look at some of my projects and put just a little work in to have them, just to have picked them up in the month. So just at the end I picked all of the different whips up and yeah. So um Yesterday, for March, I already filled in some of her cloak. This is a color conversion, by the way. So I will I replace the orange with dark red and I replace the brown of the trees with like bluish, grayish, greenish colors that I still have to decide on. It's so difficult to match them with this fabric, but I will find a way. And yeah, so I stitched the part of her like cloak, her hand, and um, that's basically the 200 stitches I did last month. And this month I did some of her cloak. And I really hope to get um, the fabric for Queen, Dark Queen of the Sea Cell and want to start her as soon as possible. So before that, I would really like to finish Lunar Witch. I love her and as always, I'm very thankful for Magical Stitches because without it, I wouldn't be so patient and stitch all the black, especially things like that. It bore me so much, but I really want to have this on my wall because it's just beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful witch patterns I ever, I've ever seen. So that's my goal to work on her as much, as much as I can so I could finish or could come close to a finish and start Dark Queen of the Sea maybe in two or three months. And let's continue. We're not done. <laughs> we are not done. So this is Zelda. Uh, the pattern is not available anymore and I can't pass it on. I'm very sorry about that. But you can find a smaller version if you look for stained glass and Zelda on Etsy. So um, I didn't work on it in January, but this month, uh, so in February, I added basically a part here and I filled in some here. I stitched a lot on this. I added 900 stitches. I know that I added all of that part, I think. Um, this is stitched on 14 count with CXC 2 over 1. I love the coverage of CXC on 14 count. It's awesome. I'm thinking of doing 
more again on 14 count when I'm using CXC. The coverage is just awesome. The stitches lie perfect. So CXC is really good for 14 count in my opinion. I think, I mean, the black is not CXC, so it doesn't cover as well. But all the other colors cover so good. I think it looks so beautiful. Now, <clears throat> I am. we are finally at the last one. This is where I'm at now. This is by Thread Geeks. This is Gothic Snow White from Thread Geeks. The artwork is by Ennis Guerrero. And um, yeah, this is the... I'm doing a, a cell with um, squishy stitches. Um, she doesn't do videos right now, but I'm pretty sure she will come back. Um, she gifted this to me, this pattern, and I want it in her giveaway. So this is where I'm at. And as you can see, I am at the castle. I added a lot more stitches up here, I think. So I filled in that column and worked my way up here. And you see in the picture, I'm up here. Like, so I did this part of the piece. And I love how it turns out. It's two strands over one on 18 count, stitched with CXC. And CXC is a bit um, bulky on 18 count, but it's still okay. I think it would be easier to have nice stitches with DMC, but it's fine. I'm good. It's okay. But I could not afford this hobby. I mean, you always have to remember in Europe, DMC always costs 95 cents and we never have sales. Never, never, ever. And I'm pretty sure that um, the shops here don't like, they probably get like five cents of margin on selling DMC. I'm pretty sure about that, that they don't make much money off the floss. So it's pretty sad, but we really have a good reason to use CXC instead of DMC. I would be so, I could not afford to stitch all the good stuff. Now, let me see. So, this is part one. Let's continue to part two. I want to quickly talk about hashtag Stitch Asia. And um, so, this is a hashtag for solidarity with people with an Asian appearance or an Asian heritage or anything. And so, since Corona, there were there was so much violence and hate against people that look Asian um, because there was so much mis misinformation and people are just like crazy and make people that look Asian responsible for, you know, the pandemic and everything. It's ridiculous, but and very, very sad. Um, so I actually researched if that's a problem in Germany too. We didn't have that kind of rhetoric in Germany, but um, there are still many racist people right now that are going crazy. Um, there are actually studies right now going um, that research that topic, but they didn't really find anything yet. So there are no results yet and I didn't see anything about it in the news. So um, there are other groups in here in Germany that are that have problems that suffer f uh, from racism. So maybe we will start something about that um, in solidarity um, as well. But so this month is hashtag Stitch Asia. The idea is to show your support for the Asian community and. Um, yeah, just stitch something that has an Asian image or has, has an Asian designer or, you know, has anything to do with that. And I got an embroidery kit from China. 
a few um, weeks ago so it had a frame and I will link it down below it's a bit expensive but it has silk silk threads and they advertise it to include a to include scissors but they don't have scissors included so just a heads up so you know I already unboxed it there's silk floss in here there are like a needle threader or two needle threaders and two needles and this is the silk floss in here and I just picked it up because I bought my CXC floss from them and um, then I just added something <laughs> because I couldn't just uh, order floss. And this is the package and this is... So this is like a handkerchief. Um, I don't know if that's the right term for that. And you just do embroidery on here. And I never did embroidery before, and but there are videos online. There's no like, I think if you scan this QR code, there might be a page where you find more infos and a tutorial, but I will just look it up online, how to stitch these. And this is my hashtag Stitch Asia project for March. And I can't wait to try it. I'm really curious. It's like a very very nice fabric and very very soft silk I'm very very curious I love to try new things and I love that this is not a super big project because I don't have time I have some cross stitching to do <laughs> okay so that was Stitch Asia. Oh, one thing I want to add on that topic is uh, I as you know I ordered the gift of stitching magazines um, if you want to see their magazine, it's T-G-O-S-M for The Gift of Stitching Magazine. I bought all their 72 issues as PDF for 40 bucks or 30, I think. They always have like really good offers and I don't regret it. There will come a series about these where I want to stitch one thing from every single magazine they released and tell you something about the topics they discuss in the issue but that's for another time I just looked at the first issue and there was a really really nice article in it about the history of cross stitch and the first thing I read is that um, the first discovered material fragments are dated from 3000 before Christ it is in China that the oldest traces of embroidery were discovered. So I think that's a really nice add to that our embroidery art is probably originated in China. And yeah, that's awesome. And the, by the way, the oldest piece of embroidery that is still there uh, was discovered in Athens, Greece and is dated in the fifth century before Christ. That's also pretty interesting. I will tell you more about that in another episode because I don't have time today, but something like, like I would like to, you know, do something like that. And they have really interesting articles in, every, in their magazine. So I really encourage you to, to take a look at it. They, they have really nice issues. Then, um, a lady contacted me via email and told me she watches my videos and um, I already mentioned her in the German video so um, she has Teresa Wenzler patterns and she already stitched two and she didn't stitch the other two because her eyesight has gone bad she didn't stitch on them for 25 years and asked me if I want to have them. And I said, yes, of course. <laughs> if you don't have any use for them, um, I would love to, and I would love to pass things on to the community if I finish them or don't want to stitch them. And so 
I expected like a small, you know, a letter with like two patterns inside and then the DHL postman had a parcel for me and she sent like a full box and a very sweet letter and uh, it's I'm so grateful she this this is so awesome she she wrote me that she gave me all the cross stitch supplies that she has left and she didn't look at them for the last 25 years and she enjoys my videos so much that she just thought, oh, let's just pass all the stuff on. I won't work on it anyways. And yeah, she put it in the box and sent it over. So let's see what she sent us. Um, so I have this pattern book. I will just put it in a random order because I filmed my German video yesterday and it's all just in a big crazy pile right now. Um, this is historical um, sampler book in German. So this is very interesting and I really want to share the information of this with you. We, It's a very cheap book so you find this used on eBay for like very very few bucks um, in Germany at least. So it's a pretty old book from yeah, it's not that old. 1996 is not that long ago. Um, but um, this has like very interesting patterns in here. And um, it has a history of um, samplers, especially in German, I think. So there are German samplers in here. And she has all about the history, so she has a page where she explains what the motives are, what the meaning of the symbols are. And I think the history in Germany about um, like these samplers is less, even lesser known than in the US. Because the cross-stitch community in Germany is still very, very tiny. Um, so what I would like to do with this is just... Um, stitch a little piece of all the projects that are in here and make a special series and talk to you about um, what I learned from the book. So um, for example this is so fascinating this is from Nuremberg 1683 and this is a picture of the original sampler 1683 this is so interesting and so um, in the book you can read what the meaning is, where it is from, um, um, in which mu museum it hangs and she has a um, cross stitch pattern for the sampler. So what I would do is just like pick a little motif like that one below and talk about what I learned and you know. so. Tell me what you think about this idea. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's a boring idea. Um, but um, I would really, really like to do this and work with this book, and maybe pass it along to uh, to you international people. And if uh, if we are done with the series and I stitched a little bit of everything, as it is very affordable to get in Germany, I would really like to give this to someone international so you can stitch it too. I mean, the um, the writing is of course it's all in German, but I mean the patterns explain themselves. So yeah. Then maybe you want to learn German with a sampler book. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, so my camera is already dying. What do you have? So next time I want to talk to you about the whip go board. Next time I want to talk to you about my plans. Um, and now I just, before I show you the rest of her parcel, I want to tell you one thing because I, I have to get going now. I want to start The Sandman. This is a kit by Gecko Rouge and um, I got this two years ago and recently I read the graphic novel and Audible released an audiobook um, exclusive which is specially, so it's written for an audio audiobook by the author. 
of the graphic novel to work as an audiobook. So this, this is awesome. And for the reading challenge, I wanted to start the audiobook. So I have to just start the matching project with that, right? So I plan on starting this on 28 count, um, 2 over 1 10 stitch. It has 18 colors of gray, black and white. And I use the gray fabric that I use for my Gypsy Firefly. And as you know, I like to prepare my, my fabric. So I measured 6 centimeters, like it's a little bit more than two inches, so maybe maybe two and a quarter inches. I don't know. And um, I just take a cheap thread and go along and put like, go up for 10, down for 10, up for 10, down for 10. And every 10 blocks, I make a little mark. So I see right away, this is 100 stitches, this is 200 and I measure my fabric that way. So I can be really sure that I don't make a mistake and I count this like a hundred times and now I know this is the right size of fabric. I will hem it with my sewing machine with a zigzag stitch and then I'm ready to start. So this is going to be my new start in the month of March and I'm so, so excited. This was not planned at all. But with the reading channel challenge, I thought I have to start this. But you know, that's just what I wanted to say in between before my camera dies. And um, so that's, so now back to the parcel I got from the very, very nice lady. So first thing is the sampler book. Then I got these so super cute houses. And I think I will give a, give this away as well in the future. We are current we currently have a warning from DHL that the USPS is over flooded with parcels and they can't um, so there are heavy delays with international mail and they recommend to not send anything to the US, which is pretty crazy. Um, and there are many parcels get lost. So I'm scared right now to ship anything and put any giveaways out to the US. But I think maybe I will save something like this up to give to you in the future as a giveaway whenever the situation is better. But I think this is so cute. So this is an alphabet with several houses on here. And um, yeah, I love it. It is, so you can, here they have an example, you can do a welcome. That's so cute. It's by Cross My Heart Inc. Yeah. Next one is, um, so here we go. This is crazy. If you followed me, you know that I always wanted to stitch the castle sampler. Let me see if I can get the pattern up here. So I expected this. I expected to get just, you know, this. And what she sent me is the whole project. And this is the castle sampler by Teresa Wensler. And I thought this is so beautiful. I love the medieval stuff so much. So, oh my God, I, 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 I went nuts when I saw this. I ran through the flat screaming because I just couldn't believe that the, that she actually sent me this almost finished project. It's, I, I just, I can't, I don't know, I can't. This is crazy. So everything that's missing is part of the background up here and the backstitch on the people, and then it's done. And she had to give up on it because she couldn't see it and she just didn't work on it anymore. And apparently she didn't even want to have it. So if she asked me to finish it for her and send it back, I would have done that. But she said I could have it. And her stitches are beautiful. It's so beautifully done. I hope I can, when I fill this in, 
make the stitches look close to what it's supposed to look like. Um, but here she started back stitching but never finished it. And I think it's so beautiful. It's so, so beautiful. I love these characters down here with their instruments. And yeah, there's just the back stitch missing. She's all the border work. I was so scared to do the border work. Now I don't have to do it anymore. And I would probably um, just remove her initials and make them smaller and put her initials back in and put mine on the side. So like maybe put like a slash like GE slash LB. So we have our both of our initials and she has here, what is it? 1969. I will restitch 1969 and put like 2021 if I finish it this year in here as well. So we have like, it's our community project together. I love this so much. I can't believe, I actually cannot believe she did this. That she gave this away. I will frame it for sure. And here you see a very good way to um, to keep your fabric from from unraveling is just fold it over and put like a very simple stitch along, so it doesn't fray. That's a pretty great idea. So yeah, I'm. it's crazy. I, I still can't believe it. I'm still lost for words that she gave this to me. And then she had this project. And this is the harvest sampler, I think. And I've never seen that before from Teresa Wenzler. And um, I'm not sure if I will stitch on it. Um... I will have to see, but it's still very pretty. She started it. Her work is so neat and so nicely done. And yeah, that's how far she came with that project. And um, I can't believe it. It's, it's stunning. So the next thing, I think this is the last thing. There are two patterns that I would give to give away to my German viewers that are like two small fairies and um, but I make sure that I have a giveaway for you as soon as the postal issue is resolved. She also gave, also gave me this DMC card, like color card and it's an older version so the colors might not be that accurate but I need it for matching, um, for color changing. So you know I like to change my colors on, um, on patterns and so far I've only used like online color cards and I've been thinking about getting something like this for a long time because it's so helpful when you want to change colors on a project and now I have it. It's crazy. These are so expensive. I'm so, so, so grateful that you gave this to me. I will put it to very good use. I can use this so, so well for my projects. It's amazing. So, I mean, of course, these are the old colors. I think there's not even 3,800. So it only goes to, to 3... So this is from the 90s probably as well. It goes to 3799 and that's it. And I think it has some of the old colors, the two digit colors that are not here anymore. But anyways, most of them are still in use and I can I can really make a great use of that. So I'm so grateful. Yeah, then she gave me all of the DMC floss from her projects and I really like how she did it. So this is like a top of a cardboard box and she made her the bobbins herself. So there are like cardboard separators in here and um, she made matching bobbins that fit in the width perfectly. And I like it because they're pretty big. So you see the numbers of DMC. 
so well, so much better than the bobbins we can buy. I'm really seriously, you know, I want to get away from bobbins, but I love how you see it in, at one glance what the color number is. This is awesome. So she gave me all her DMC for the Teresa Wenzel projects. This is even more for the projects. And um, there are all the beads for the harvest sampler. It's amazing, it's crazy. So there will be so much left over because I don't need much floss for the um, the castle sampler and I already checked it with my new projects I will use them I can use them in newer projects that I need floss for so this is awesome I'm so 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 grateful for this amazing gift and um, you know I I think she will probably not watch the video but she said that she's doing diamond painting now because that's something she can still see and I am in the process of picking uh, some beautiful diamond paintings for her so I can send them back as a thank you to her and I hope she likes them um, but yeah that's my episode there's so much I have so many more plans so Something I can add before my camera runs out. Stitch Mania, the group is closing. So I never participated in Mania because in May, at the end of May, is the big goth festival that I always go to, which means there's a lot of people going to my shop um, that need um, for their dresses that need more materials so it's always very busy in my shop and also I am preparing for the festivals doing my own clothing um, doing my own jewelry um, packing planning where which bands to see and so May has always been very bad for me to participate but this year nothing's going to happen and I'm probably sitting sad at home crying that I can't meet friends and going to concerts so I will do mania this year I'm plan I've already planned it all through I will do 15 starts I will go crazy and I will show you my preparation in my next floss tube so if you want to see that and join the crazy ride with me um, press the subscribe button give me a like and Say hello in the comments. I'm always so, so happy to read from you guys. And thank you so much for watching. There are so many exciting things to come. Um, thank you that you're here. And happy stitching. And hope to see you in the next video. Bye!